Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the very best 4 bay NAS to buy at the start of 2020. I'm recording this in January 2020, hopefully it's been published within that month as well. And today I want to talk about the best 4 bay NAS for you to buy right now from each brand. And if you've been following this channel for the last couple of years, some of these results are not going to surprise you because the majority of them either came out last year or the year before. Very early in this year, we're not really seeing a lot of new four bays and some of you might be holding out for the new releases from the likes of Synology, QNAP, Asus Store and more, but other ones might be thinking right now, I need a solution right now. Maybe you've been given a new work budget. Maybe you've come into some money after Christmas. I don't know. But if you're looking for a brand new 4-bay as either your first 4-bay NAS or to replace an existing 4-bay that's looking a little bit long in the tooth, then chances are one of the solutions I'm going to talk about today is best for you. Now, it's worth highlighting there are other 4-bays, particularly in the case of QNAP, for example. They have one of the largest ranges of 4-bay NAS solutions currently available from any one NAS brand. And with that, it's worth highlighting that although I'm going to talk about my personal favourite, there are others and some of these others are designed for different purposes. These are NASs that kind of tick the boxes in a number of ways and don't really have a specialization. They're kind of a jack of all trades from each of the NAS brands that tick a lot of the boxes. But bear in mind, there are other solutions. And of course, as 2020 progresses, there will be other NASs released, which may be better than these. So if you're watching this video and it's maybe March or April of 2020, maybe hold off because these results are kind of limited to the start of 2020. But that massive disclaimer aside, let's get our hands dirty and talk about some of these NAS brands. So I already mentioned QNAP there, so let's get straight into it. With QNAP NAS, there is a whole host of good 4-bay NASs. Last year and the end of 2018, we saw all manner of 4-bays, from the TS-473, which is that great AMD file server NAS, to the TVS-472 XT. We have seen some insane 4-bays, even you know, compact 4-bay NASs like the TBS-453DX, and the HS453DX, silent 10GBE NASs that may be good for you. But for me, it's going to be no surprise, my favourite QNAP uh, for you guys to be buying at the start of 2020, that's a 4-bay, is of course the TS453BE. It just gives a lot. It is the best value. It's great for Plex. It's great for VMs. It's great for surveillance, both in Surveillance Center and QBR Pro, with four and eight camera license, respectively. It's got a PCIe slot for adding 10 GBE, SSD cache, or both with the QNAP QM2 series. And with that software, QTS 4.4.1, really, really improving and becoming its very own beast. The 453BE is just such a solid NAS from them that it ticks so many boxes and can grow into so many different forms of storage that for me, it's still the best 4 bay they've put out for a very long time. I'm interested to see what a follow-up to this would look like and if it will present as much value as this, but the 453BE with its two years of warranty and with a myriad of applications from QNAP in the form of hybrid backup sync 3, virtualization station, QBR Pro, hybrid mount, virtual JBOD, and all of their photo station, video station, and music station applications for PC and mult, um, PC and Mac systems, as well as all of the mobile apps, and have an HDMI out. It's a beast, and its price point is ridiculous at the moment, because it's a, almost two years old as a NAS device, which makes it affordable, makes it good value, and is still a powerful solution from them. So moving forward, Let's talk about Synology. Those two big rivals are always going to be at the top of the pack as far as a number of you concerned. And likewise, just like QNAP, their best 4-bay right now is one that some of you might be getting a little bored of and think, that old one? But let's face it, you know what I'm going to say if you've watched my videos before. It's the DS918+. Plus. Now, again... It's not the only 4-bay they've got currently right now. You can go for everything from the 4220J 4-bay that was unveiled at PEPCOM 2020 just before CES this year, 
or you can go for the 418 play the standard 418 there are loads of four bays from them even if you want to go powerful 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 you can look at the dva 3219 uh, a surveillance car uh, surveillance nas that's ai powered with a graphics card inside but that one at 12 1300 nicker is a really expensive nas and also the cpu yeah, a bit shaky but in terms of four bays right now the DS918 Plus for me is just unbeatable. If it wasn't only the case of Synology software on its own, I'd say to go for any of the four bays from them, simply because DSM 6.2 with seven around the corner gives you so much along with BTIFS, file system choices, and the use of Synology Hybrid RAID, that wonderful fluid RAID system that allows you to mix and match your drives at a later date and expand your storage rather than having to fill up your drives and wonder what to do. The device, just like the QNAP, can be expanded to more drives, but what makes this device particularly interesting is that CPU inside. Now, it has a, almost the same internal hardware as the QNAP we've just discussed, with both of them arriving with the J3455 4-core uh, um, Intel based CPU. It's a Celeron 1.5 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz per core. This CPU is great for Plex. It's great for virtualization if you want one or two VMs running, great for Docker applications, great for 4K output and 4K transcoding. It is a great NAS. And because it's two years old, it's affordable. It even arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty which is something that QNAP only give you two years. So that's a good area of comparison. Where does it fall? Not really many places. Even the software is incredibly intuitive. And if anything, that's one area which some people might not like it. The software is almost a little too easy, which I know seems ridiculous, but sometimes the more t difficult choices you can't find or are hidden behind walls and walls of we want to keep things easy, something that QNAP doesn't give you that some of you might be a bit intimidated by. They're both user-friendly in their own way. But the Narman 8 Plus, with all of that internal hardware and internal SSD caching bays into the base of the device, giving you great internal performance where you want it, make the Narman 8 still the best 4-bay NAS that Synology have put out for a long time. And even now, at the start of 2020, definitely worthy of your money and your data. So, if we move on, we can talk about two other brands that we talk about in the channel a hell of a lot. We talk about Asus Dawn and we talk about TerraMaster. Let's flip an invisible coin. Let's talk about TerraMaster first. So, TerraMaster has a great range of four and five bay NASs. All of them with the, um, you know, their great TOS software that isn't quite as polished as Synology's DSM or QTS platform. There's no denying that it is a younger company with still some you know some you know they've got to make their bones within this market as much as those two but they've evolved exceptionally quickly they've got btrfs level support of file system choices once you set the device up and some of their devices arrive with exactly the same internal hardware in terms of that cpu and that same memory option of four or two gig depending on the devices you go for but i want to talk about the f4422 this four bay device is definitely something worthy of your time. With a quad core base CPU, there's also a five bay version with 10 GBE of all things, but we're not gonna talk about that now. Um, and this TerraMaster NAS is certainly worthy of your time if you're a budget buyer, because it's got 4K transcoding, the TOS software, although once again, not as polished as Synology or QNAP's offering, is still quite intuitive, quite smooth, and quite nippy. The applications, there are fewer first-party apps, but it does cover everything from cloud synchronization to localized USB backups and R-Sync. It doesn't have its own dedicated surveillance platform, but what it does arrive with is the ability for mapped storage, iSCSI, and more to your own existing surveillance software. They have got their own first-party applications for videos, music, and photos, and support of things like Plex and other network-based media uh, programs like iTunes and stuff like that. And it is one of the most affordable on this list, with their four bay and indeed five bay solutions often arriving at lower price levels compared with all of their contemporaries. What makes them an unappealing choice? Well, a number of you may argue their chassis are a little dated. And given that even though they are a company that's becoming more and more available around the world, they are predominantly only found on Amazon. I know a number of you aren't as keen about buying on Amazon due to tax stuff and 
basically Amazon being a slightly questionable company in the eyes of some, meaning that TerraMaster may not be your NAS choice because of things like this. All I ask you is if you shop around, you can buy it from other vendors. And TerraMaster as a NAS, if you're looking for an affordable solution for network attached storage, is worthy of your time. But let's talk about that other company. Let's talk about Acer Store and the Nimbus Store 4. That is a great little NAS. When the Nimbus Store 4 came about, I wasn't talking about Acer Store that much prior to that point. I'd looked at a number of their solutions, featured a number of them on this channel previously, but it was only at the start of 2019 and going into the summer that Acer Store really went all in. The Nimbus Store series from them is a hell of a device. It was one of the first devices to take advantage of the newer generation Intel Celeron series, the J4115, a quad core based CPU that's of the latest generation of Celeron uh, for NAS. On top of that, it arrived with four gig of DDR4 memory. It arrived with um, HDMI port on the rear that's 2.0a, so that's 60 frames per second 4K, which is great. On top of that, it arrived with 2.5 GBE as standard. So whereas every device I've talked about today either has one GBE or a PCIe expansion port to allow more upgraded network interface cards, NICs, the Ace Store Nimbus Store 4 arrives with 2.5 GBE times 2 as standard. So 5 GBE link aggregation potential straight off the bat. On top of that, ADM from them, their user interface software, the graphical user interface, the GUI, via the browser is really impressive. They've gone for a kind of gamer-inspired theme with this device, but on top of that, they have really pushed the boat out on that software with regular updates as well. They didn't have as many updates in the past as they do now, but with the added benefit, they've really trimmed down the third-party apps in their store for a better range and investing a lot more in first-party applications. With it, you've got a surveillance platform, Surveillance Center, though it isn't quite as polished just as long as your QNAP's outing is still pretty damn good with the support of thousands of IP cameras. On top of that, support of things like Plex Media Server with performance outdoing all three of the other analysis that I've talked about today in terms of Plex Media Server transcoding and general performance and their own range of multimedia applications as well. It looks good, sounds good, and the video application as well, which I'm not 100% certain I've got the name right there. Now, Acer Store is definitely more known than TerraMaster. Asus, of course, huge presence in the gaming community. So Asus Store being a branch of that company has a lot more money behind them than other companies. They're not quite as big as these guys up here, but Asus Store is definitely a brand that you should already know about in NAS. Now, what's bad about Asus Store? Not a lot, to be honest. I, the only thing I would say is when you're using Asus Store NAS, they're not quite as focused in terms of their product as Synology or QNAP. Whereas QNAP seem to focus a lot on the hardware and still have time for the software, and Synology focus a lot on the software and still have time for the hardware, Acer Store still seems to find a balance. And although they're doing a very, very good job in 2019 and 2020, I still think that balancing act is not quite perfect. They're still giving you the best value in terms of hardware uh, for, for your money, which although they may not be quite at the price point that TerraMaster is, they're definitely more affordable than Synology and QNAP while still giving you better hardware overall. In fact, the Nimbus Store 4 is cheaper than both the QNAP TF453BE and the Synology DS918 Plus with better network ports, better HDMI ports, and a better CPU. So what else? What about the rest of the NAS industry? There are other options, of course. We can talk about Drobo, which have their own uh, NAS series, but of course Drobo is a company that's gone very, very quiet lately. And they are only five bay, uh, they don't have a four bay NAS solution favoring a five bay, the five N2. But as I say, as a brand, they've got real quiet recently. There are, of course, other NAS brands too, in the form of Netgear and Buffalo. And both of these companies are really aimed at a business level user with both of them providing quite affordable 10 GBE rugged enterprise level NAS solutions but not really something for the home or business user which is what this video is about finding solutions that appeal to basically all the demographics at once now of course all the solutions I've talked about today are ones that I personally think are the best 4 bay 
from their brand. But it's worth highlighting that there are other solutions out there. And don't be pigeonholed by the devices I talked about today because as much as I like these four solutions, none of them are particularly perfect for video editing. None of them are particularly perfect for virtual machine use. And there are other solutions available. So if you're looking for the right NAS for you, don't just immediately take me at my word. If you've got a very bespoke setup, or maybe you're a content creator or work in post-production where the size of your files and the speed at which you've got to access them is paramount, bung a question in the comments or visit nascompareswithspan.com to learn more and maybe help you choose the right solution for you. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Not the small town girl. Living in the Lord. Hello and thank you for watching Span TV. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe and don't tell anyone what you saw today. Now check them out, all our videos on Synology, QNAP, NASDAQ, Son of Old Stories and all the rest of it. Once again, I can't stress not to tell anyone about what you saw today. Now go away.